They did it again. And this time it is clearly not a 48 volt battery box, right? I'm getting frequent comments under my videos where people are requesting to do something else than 48 volt, like 12 volt or 24 volt. And they're absolutely right. We should do more 12 volt and 24 volt stuff as well. And we will. I have heaps of projects coming up where we need to build some 12 volt, 24 volt and even 5 volt power supplies, solar battery, solar charge controller, BMS. So, for today, our friends from Eel Battery, yep, these guys, they have sent me this one. I don't know what to expect. I have just opened it. So, let's have a look together what's going on. And of course, guys, the weather. The weather is a bit, um, it's amazing today. We had like 80 amps outside this morning and then the clouds were a bit too thick, but now it's getting better and better. So it's really bright light and I think we've got around 50 amps outside. Let's have a look. Ah, uh, 37 amps. Still we are at 25% and we are still charging with two kilowatts. So I'm more than happy with that for winter. And tomorrow will be the shortest day in our winter. Solstice. The day after tomorrow, it will be already a tiny bit longer than tomorrow. So it is kind of a um, hump day. Okay, let's have a look what's inside. What a cool color. Look at this beautiful orange. Well, obviously this is a 12 volt battery box. I'm already stunned by this color. That is something completely different. Usually we only see black or white, but this color, ooh, I like it. So apparently this is um, Eel's new 12 volt do-it-yourself battery box. And I thought we are doing something for our camping RV friends today. Boating. Ooh. Ooh. Really? Holy crap. Look at this. You have to see that. <laughs> We've got a PCB across the battery cells with all the connections for the balance cables. That is amazing. I've never seen this one for a 12 volt battery. And what do we have here? I can only read JK BMS. Oh. Is this actually the first 12 volt battery do it yourself kit with a JK BMS inside? Ah, here we've got some space for the BMS, holds for a power button, terminals, and what? Do we have a, really, do we have a compression plate in here? No way. Okay, let's take this one out. BMS, what do we get? It's a 200 amp BMS. It's the B2A8S20P. That's the 488S BMS we have already tested here on the channel. Very nice. Yeah, epoxy. Smaller epoxy. Ah, the guys from Eel. That is really the best. These little plastic containers here with all the screws in it. Look how clean this looks like. Huh? Fuse. All the screws sorted. No big bags full of screws and fasteners and everything. And, and what's that? Oh, they're terminals. Of course, battery terminals. Wow, first impression here, wow, we've got a big cage a support for the battery cells. And yes, we have a compression plate. How do we, ah, oh, they made this one removable. We can remove the whole front of the battery box here. What a cool design. And we've got even rubber feet. And we've got a bit of a recess here to carry the battery. Okay, we've got three screws on each side and then we can remove the front panel. <laughs> and yes, yes guys, we have a compression plate here. Six screws going into the frame of this battery box here and compressing our battery cells. It should be so easy to build this battery here. It looks like this is exactly the same design idea as they had for the big battery box just in a smaller version. Yeah, we've got this PCB here for the balance cables, 200 amp BMS, all the epoxy sheets, compression plate, support frame. This is just a mini battery box. Bottom, side, side, back, front. 
and another three in between the cells. Easy! Just wondering, I haven't seen any cables so far, nothing. Whoa! <laughs> Open the box. Here they are. Oh, lots of terminal covers. Beautiful, flexible bus bars. Oh, and here double six gauge wire connecting from the BMS to the terminals. No, the other way around. BMS, terminal, power button, connector from the BMS to the PCB. There, temperature sensors and the 200 amp BMS. And really by chance, I've got four MB31 battery cells from EVE here. Let's see, cell one negative. So we have to start with a negative here in the corner. There's our negative, epoxy in between. So negative, positive, negative, positive, and we just keep going. Yeah, if I put this back in, the cells are loose. So um, I had a look in the package and everything. There is no EVA tape or something. There probably should be five sticky foam sheets in this box as well to put in between the cells to give us a bit more compression because this is a bit loose. They have either forgotten this or it's just their design. I don't know. Um, I've got some in stock here. Hang on. I was just going to start the time lapse here to see how much sticky foam I actually need in between the cells. But it looks like we need only two sheets, one at the back, one at the front, and this should give us enough compression now. Yes, there you can see it. This is around, there's probably three or four millimeters of gap now. And we've got six M6 screws here, so we need to tighten them with what was it, 0.5 newton meters only to create this 300 kilogram of force? We shouldn't even call it a compression, right? It's more a fixture. <laughs> yeah, I think we can fully screw them in. The plate will stop compressing them at some stage. And then we've got the foam at the front and back. And the foam will lose the compression force anyway over time. We can just screw them in all the way. Yeah, perfect. There's nothing moving anymore. Ooh, that looks good. <laughs> that is such a good idea. So two screws here, two screws at the back. Oh, I just realized they have actually put a threaded insert here in these flexible bus bars. Look at this for the balance cables. I've never seen that before. That is amazing. Okay, main positive. This is a negative. This one obviously goes over here. And then, okay, so hang on. This one goes over there. And we need this one to go over there. And we need this one to go over there. I don't know what these wings are for here. Are there any flange nuts in here? Oh yeah, there are, of course. Of course there are. We can use these rubber terminal covers here as well. They slide onto these bus bars and then cover the terminal completely. Very cool. Yeah, and then afterwards it looks like this. So the terminals are completely sealed off, completely covered, secured. Yeah, it's not a bad solution. It's great. I was just asking what these wings are for. And then I connected this longer double cable here to the negative terminal of the battery and said, well, this is a bit short actually to reach the BMS here, which is, sits in this compartment. No, it's not. These wings are actually holding down the BMS. The BMS sits on top of this like here. And now these ones are connecting to the terminals here of the BMS. So there's nothing sitting here in this compartment. This is really just to get access to the compression plate, nothing else. Okay guys, I think I got it now. Um, because there's no manual provided with this box here, there's no QR code to scan, nothing. I mean, it is fairly straightforward and intuitive to how to install this battery here with all the components. So I was thinking, which way around does the BMS actually belong? But with this connection cable between the BMS and the PCB, which is very short, it can be only this way. 
So this implies the longer cables are going to the P negative and then the negative is over here. So this fits well. And this is our B negative, which goes to the negative of the battery, which goes just around there to this terminal. And then I thought, well, there's a cable missing between the positive of the battery to the terminal. Just a short cable, maybe, maybe um, that short. I'm using the fuse as the missing link cable. There you go. Look at this. Huh? What a cool design. I wasn't a big fan of these studded terminals at the beginning when they came out a couple of years ago because the contact area up here is very, very small. And if you put this fuse on top of this battery terminal, you can see you can see how little contact area it actually has between the fuse and the terminal of the battery. But we have done all the testing with these terminals here and different bus bars as well. I'll link these videos down below in the description. And there was no issue with these studded battery terminals and pushing 230 amps continuously. No heat build up, nothing. So don't get fooled with these small contact areas you have with these terminals. This is probably exactly what you want. So flange nut on top here. Oh, how do I do that? Ooh, that is a bit. Okay. I need to put the balance cables on first and then slide these battery condoms back on. It's just the wrong order. Okay. Then we set four Newton meters with our torque adapter. I'm not going to lie, these sleeves here, these rubber sleeves, they are a bit a pain in the ass. But once everything is in place and torqued down, it looks pretty good. Okay, my friends, I have almost fully assembled now this battery here. So a good tip is to leave these connections here the last to tighten. So it gives you a bit more flexibility when you mount the BMS onto this carrier to align these cables here perfectly to the BMS. So there's no tension on the cable and they fit perfectly between BMS and your terminals. And in one of the last steps, we want to connect the power button to, I guess it's this one here. It says it only in Chinese there, but there's only one port which actually fits this connector. And we also have the balance cable connector, which fits only one way onto this PCB. And if everything goes well, there's no spark, no, no magic smoke. I think there are two more screws missing on this PCB. And one of these uh, rubber terminal covers um, just broke because I was trying to get this one into the opening as well, but it's too tight. So this one is unfortunately broken now and no spare one supplied. Okay, so let's have a final look. So all the terminal nuts are tightened with four Newton meters, as well as these connections to the BMS. So are these ones to the outgoing terminals. Put this cover on top temperature sensor. Goes in here. Just doesn't fit into this corner. Sometimes they do. No, it doesn't. Yeah, there's always the question where to mount these temperature sensors here in such a battery. And it would be perfect if they would go in between the batteries, just halfway through to over here somewhere. They're just a tiny bit too large to fit into these gaps. And then you usually end up and just glue them on top of the battery, which is not really perfect, but what can you do? Okay, I'll take care of this later. Now oh, we should actually turn it on. There it is. Click to view alarm, cell count and modify password, the usual stuff. What was the capacity of these MB31 cells again? This was like 329 ampere hours or something, right? Okay, we put this on 314. So the rated capacity for these cells, we have a quick look at the settings. Ah, lithium ion phosphate, I should click. We have, is this a newer one which has, oh yeah, it has already the state of charge 100% and it also has a state of charge 0% voltage you can set. Let's have a look what we have. 
and this one is running software version 11.48. What do we have? 3.26, 3.26. All the temperature sensors are working. It's on 0% now. It needs to be fully calibrated now. So one full charge and then it sits on 314 ampere hours for the full capacity. But we know we're getting more out of these MB31 cells. If you haven't seen the review of these battery cells here, I'll link this down below as well. These are battery cells from QSO, one of our preferred suppliers of these batteries. Amazing quality and even more amazing capacity. Yeah, we tested the MB30 and the MB31. Capacity test, unbelievable. Almost 330 ampere hours. Totally crazy. Yeah, guys, I think this is the whole build of the Eel battery 12 volt do it yourself kit. Here again, bring your own battery cells. Everything else is included in this kit. What do you reckon? I think this is just such a good idea to simply shrink down the design from the big battery box from the 48 volt systems and make a smaller version for a 12 volt system. Then we've got the PCB across the cells and we've got a compression plate in this 12 volt battery. It's a simple and great solution. And honestly guys, I cannot find anything negative here in this battery design, in this battery box. The quality is outstanding powder coated steel. I like the design with the removable front plate to access the compression plate. We've got flexible bus bars, silicon double six gauge wire, terminal covers. And of course, I like this little box here. Keeps all the screws very well organized. <laughs> yeah, guys, what do you reckon? Do we have one? Do we have a five out of five? I mean, don't forget, We've got this amazing orange lid as well. And I've tried, regardless if I put it this way or the other way around, all the holes are lining up. I know, I know, right? I cannot find anything negative on this battery box. Nothing. Yes, there could be a display, but you know, it makes it more expensive. Do you need a display? No, probably not. We've got Bluetooth access. I don't know, do we have a five out of five? <laughs> I'll leave it totally up to you. Put the amount of frogs down in the comment section. And I've just quickly connected a charger here, 13.3 volts and 2.5 amps. And we can see here 1.2.1 amps in the BMS as well. Everything is beautiful. And is there maybe some space for a display in the future? If you build this battery here, it takes maybe 45 minutes maximum and you don't even need a manual for it. It's that easy. I'm not sure if this box is already available on the market. If so, I'll link it down below. So if you're looking for a 12 volt battery box, a bit of do it yourself, put your own battery cells in it. They take everything from 230, no, 200, 280, all the way up to 320 ampere hours. I have used the MB31 from EVE now. Works beautifully, looks beautifully. As always guys, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your amazing support here to these wonderful and beautiful people who are donating to the channel or becoming a channel member. Welcome to all these... Welcome to all the new subscribers here on the channel. Oops, battery of the camera empty. All right guys, until the next video. You stay charged, stay safe, and thanks again for watching. See you then. Bye-bye. <laughs> the last couple of seconds are missing.